church, all who are with us here, all who are watching at home, we'd like to come. We'd like to thank you for joining us. Say well, and may we open the service with an open prayer. May we bow our hands with you. Our Father, our Father, creator of all things, we come to you with an open heart. We come to you with our Yeah. Good morning, George. Yeah, those who fear and their strength when going home brings back memories that are not so not so healing. We are reminded of when we didn't feel it, when we didn't measure, when we weren't loved like we needed to be loved. Home can be a critical place.
where we can live in peace and unity with all. We light these candles, the candle of hope and the candle of peace, as a sign of our assurance that though the road is hard, we believe it's worth the journey. It is time to go home. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning, First Church. Good morning to you, whether you are worshiping with us in the sanctuary or you are worshiping with us at home on Facebook or YouTube. I want to say welcome to the second Sunday of Advent. Do we have any first-time guests visiting with us this morning in the sanctuary? If you are worshiping with us for the first time electronically on Facebook or YouTube, please put a comment section and so that we can acknowledge you and welcome you. Thank you for coming out today, experiencing this cold and the seasonal changes. I'm just loving it because the seasonal changes reflect the changing seasons of our life so that we thank God through all the seasons of our lives. Again, I say welcome. Have a wonderful and blessed service.
Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Our Pastor Stewart is going to make an announcement, but I saw some families that I just want to recognize in the congregation this morning. The Kwesi Wu family, I just praise God. I'm glad you all are here today to worship with us. We continue to pray with and for you each and every day. And we just want you to know that we stand with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then um, the Cole family is here today to celebrate uh, the passing of their their mother and father, we want to we want to pay honor to them also. And we just give God thanks and praise for all you being here. Don't forget next Saturday, next Saturday, next Saturday. Carol's funeral. Cal Bergman's funeral is at 10 a.m. Viewing is 9, and the funeral is 10 a.m. And at 2 p.m., we will celebrate with Tajay their Christmas concert. We don't have live flowers up here because we're not ready for live flowers in the sanctuary as yet. Too many variances are still here. And so we want to just be extra careful with your lives and with all our lives. If you haven't received your shot, you can do so after church downstairs in the fellowship hall. We have shots, your vaccine, I'm calling them shots. That's the wrong word to use these days. Vaccine for children and for adults. If you need a booster, you can get that downstairs. And Pastor Stewart has some exciting news for you also this morning. For all of you who are risking fans, the, the United Methodist men have tickets uh, that they'll be able to sell you for $25 to the Eagles and Risking game on January the 2nd. And you need to be in touch with uh, the United Methodist men so we can get our count and we can take a great number out there on January the 2nd. I can't, um, so we ask that you please get in touch with Victor or any of the United Methodist men so that we can get a count and we can go out together on January the 2nd. You won't be able to get tickets this price uh, again for a long time. They are on sale for $25 per person because of the pandemic and of other things. They want to fill the stands. So if those of you who want to go, please see a member of the United Methodist Men. Uh, you can take your whole family. You can go out to uh, FedEx Field and see the Eagles and the Redskins. This will be a crucial game because if the Redskins keep winning, I keep saying Redskins, it's the Washington football team. I'm sorry. The Washington football team uh, will be able, they may be looking toward the playoffs if they keep winning. They have to play Dallas twice, and if they win one of those or maybe both, uh, they will be in contention, hopefully. So we uh, will go forth, and if you want a ticket, please see a member of the United Methodist Men. Thank you. Okay. Within the house of the Lord and what we can do together as we are outside of these walls. I come this morning with the Old Testament lesson coming from Malachi, the third chapter, verses 1 through 4. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi, 
and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. Amen. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. <clears throat> this morning's reading is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 3, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 6. Here beginneth our reading. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Ituria, and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Ananias and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan proclaiming a baptism of repentance for forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall, shall see the salvation of God, the word of God for the people of God. Now is the time for us to prepare ourselves as we give of our tithes and our offerings. So we ask that as we prepare to do that, that we might realize the words it says, it's more blessed to give than to receive. And the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and eternal God, as we come before you now, Lord, we ask that our resources might serve as that which we give back to you for all that you have given us, realizing the blessings and the bounty that thou has bestowed upon us in this season of Advent, this time of expectancy, hope, yes. peace, yes. joy, and love. We ask, O oh God, that you would be with us, that as we give back to you, realizing that all that we have comes from you. In the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord, amen. Yes.
Somebody knows it's been a rough week around here. Somebody knows that we have cried our eyes out for the last month or so, and we keep saying, Lord, we can't cry anymore. But the thing we keep remembering also is God never gives us more than we can handle. No matter what it might be, he never gives us more than we can handle. And so this morning we lift our eyes to heaven and we said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you that I woke up this morning. I thank you, Lord, that you send your angels to watch over me. I thank you, Lord, that I got my feet on the ground and my head was all right and I got dressed and I found my way into your sanctuary. Lord, somebody help me. Lord. I thank you. And Lord, I know and I know and I know that I know that I know that whatever comes my way, you're going to help us to handle it. Amen? You're going to help us to handle it. Let me just say this morning, those of you who are mourning, he promised that joy will come in the morning. I need you to hold on to that that joy will come in the morning. I don't know what morning, but I know it will come in the morning. And some of us have experienced that joy already, and I know it's going to be all right. Don't you? I know it's going to be all right. Keep holding on. Keep holding on. Isaiah said, see, I'm doing a new thing. Old things of what? Come on, somebody help me. Old things of what? Behold, all things become new. And those of you who are looking at us this morning, YouTube and, and, and Facebook, behold, behold, new things are destined for you. Amen? Let us pray. Gracious God, in your mercy, you're hearing us this morning. Gracious God, we thank you for the beginning of the service from the very beginning, from the very time we walk into your sanctuary. We feel your holy presence. God, thank you for wrapping your arms around us. Some of us walk in very lonely this morning, but we felt your arms as they wrapped themselves around us, and we couldn't let go. Let your sweet, sweet spirit dwell inside of each one of us, O oh God, so that when we leave this place today, we leave knowing that your angels surround us and they will never, ever let us go. Hallelujah, amen, amen, and amen. It was last Tuesday, just this past Tuesday, Pastor Stewart beckoned me in his office and he said to me, he said, do you know, I'm here for you. And whatever you need me to do, I, 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 I'll preach whenever you need me to do. My eyes must have been looking a pretty little tired or something. But I give God thanks and praise to Pastor Stewart because he's been there with us. He's been walking with us. He's been walking with us and he's been lifting us up. Amen. And only God could send him to us. We, we could never do this ourselves because we can never pay him for what he does for us. Amen? And so we give God thanks and praise for Pastor Stewart. And we give God thanks and praise as he lead the men into a new season. Praise God. Somebody say amen. 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 Are you ready for Christmas? Were you all excited about Advent this morning? I was. 
I was excited when I saw the babies walk. I, the parents, I love the parents, they know that. But I was excited when I saw those three babies walk in, in the, um, the room this morning, amen? And so Christmas is looking up, Christmas is looking up. And then last night I had a party, a party with Dr. O and his family. And I know y'all going, what? Yes, I did, praise the Lord, yeah, we did. We give God thanks and praise for everything. But are you ready for Christmas? I don't hear anything. Are you ready for Christmas? Oh, good. We put a lot of days and times, a lot of work into getting ready for Christmas. It seems like we do everything we can We've got to make sure this is done right. We've got to go to the mall. We've got to get online. We've got to do this, that, so we can be ready. I think Christmas is 19 days. Is it 19? 19 days from now away? And there are few among us who don't know that feeling of the rush. Let's go down the checklist. Let me help you this morning. First, there's decoration. Have you done that? Uh-huh. <coughs> we have to decorate our homes. Have you put up the lights? Uh-huh. We have to put the lights up. What about the greenery? Have you done that? And the stockings. Then there is the Christmas tree. And you all know that's a job. But if you're like me, you go to Lowe's, you get one that has all the lights on it, and all the bulbs on it, you come home and you press the button, it opens up and the Christmas tree is done. Somebody say amen. You have to put all of those ornaments on the Christmas tree and the awful task is finding every single one of those ornaments. And if you have more than one child and the things they made for you while they were in school, you better have those on the tree. And then there's the nativity scene. Oh my gosh, it better be somewhere around. No one is really ever, ever ready until Christmas gets there because there's the presents that have to be bought and wrapped. We spend hours shopping for just the right gift to give to our friends and our aunties and our uncles and even the most organized person who make a list of gifts to buy has someone on their list who is hard to shop for. Mm, I found a secret out a couple years ago. It's called gift cards. Hallelujah. So you go to the mall or you get online hoping to find that perfect gift that will inspire someone. Oh, don't forget the Christmas card. Don't forget the Christmas card. Don't send an e-card. Come on, y'all. Get a Christmas card. Y'all haven't sent your Christmas cards yet? You better do that as soon as you, can, you get home. Someone mail me a card, an Easter card. Easter 20, 2020. And I got that card. When was it, Thursday? On Thursday. No joke. The office will tell you that's the absolute truth. I got it on Thursday. And you know the post office is and postal service is working the way it's supposed to do. So get them out as soon as you can. And if you have to mail packages, get them out. All the preparation for this one day. All that preparation. But I need you this morning to imagine what it would have been like without all the preparation. Let's imagine for a minute that Christmas is December 25th and tomorrow is December 25th. 25th instead of when it is. None of us would be ready, would we? It would come too soon. I will never forget my first year in undergraduate. I went off to school and I had exams up until the 20th of December. I had done a little shopping, I had the presents I needed, but I had been used to living in a house 
where mommy would do all the decoration and make plans for everything. So happened she couldn't do it that year. And so Christmas really wasn't ready for me. I was taken back. There is more preparation for Christmas than we ever can think about. It's not about decoration and wrapping presents. Those are the material preparation. We also have to be, pre be prepared emotionally with every tree ornaments or mantle decoration, with every Christmas present or nativity figurine, we express another expression of hope and preparation. Put all together these memories, act of preparation, set that day up to be special. They are all part of a complex expression of a specialness of Christmas Day. In our gospel reading this morning that we heard, read to us, John is calling the people to prepare. John came out of the wilderness shouting, prepare and prepare, present the way for our Lord. He's heralding the coming of a king, God's anointed one the Messiah. In the ancient word, when a king decide to visit a town or a city, it was announced months in advance, and so all the streets had to be clear, even the potholes had to be uh, covered, everything had to be perfect because the king was passing through. They wouldn't want the king to remember their town for the bumpy ride on the roads. Of course, the instruction to prepare the road was a metaphor for preparing their community for the visit of a king. They were to make it look the best they possibly could, be ready to receive the king with the coming and the, uh, of, of his provision. Of course, the king that John was heralding, wasn't intended in inspecting their streets. Jesus didn't care if the streets were raggedy, if they had potholes, if they were paved or not. John was saying, straighten out your lives, amen. Straighten out your lives in preparation for God's chosen king. Make the way straight for him to enter into your lives. Smooth out the place that will make his journey rough. Be ready to accommodate the king of kings. Repent and turn from your crooked way and turn to God. People were used to making this community presentable for a king. They weren't used to making their lives presented for a king. Amen? God don't care about our, word, uh, our streets. He doesn't care if they're raggedy. He just wants our hearts to be prepared so he can enter, his son can enter into us. John was saying to them, make, make your lives presentable to the king of kings. Are you ready for Christmas, I ask again. I'm not talking about decoration this time and shopping. I'm talking about your heart. You may be materially ready. You may have all the gifts bought. You bought them over the summer. You may have all the decorations up. You may have mailed your Christmas card. You may even be emotionally ready, but are you spiritually ready? The good news of Christmas is that Jesus Christ came into the world to give us life, amen, and light and eternal joy. The prophet Malachi and John the Baptist told the people to prepare for the arrival. Just as, the, as we prepare for Jesus' arrival, we need to prepare to celebrate the anniversary of his coming. And even as we celebrate Christ's coming, we remember that he promised to come again. Are we ready to receive him the next time he comes? I'm asking. John called to straighten out our lives. Have we done that? 
to be spiritual ready to celebrate Christ's coming, we must straighten out our lives. Our heart must be right. You know, we can't hold things against our neighbor if we're going to straighten out our hearts. Amen? We can't talk about folks if we're going to straighten out our lives. But our lives need to be ready when we celebrate Christmas. It's not just about you and me. When we celebrate Christmas this year, I need you to think about your neighbor. I need you to think about worshiping Jesus. I need you to think about coming into the sanctuary and lifting holy hands if that's your thing or being silent as he silently enter into your heart. I need you to thank him even though we've been through trials and temptation. I need you to thank him for still giving you another day to make it through. I need you to get ready for Christmas. Are you spiritually ready? Is your heart ready to receive a king? Is your life presentable for the king of king? <laughs> Look closely. Look closely. We all have rough places that could be smoothed out and crooked ways that could use some straightening, smoothen them now and straighten them for the king to come. You know, I look at Christmas different than I did 10 years ago, praise God. I look at Christmas different this year than I did last year. Oh, holy God. I lost so many friends this year. I don't know about you, but I lost so many good, good friends this year that I didn't think I could take it. I didn't think I could take one more. And so Christmas means being ready that if my time comes right now, that I'm ready to see my king. How about you? That, that's what Christmas means. That means that every day that I live, I have to live it like it's the last day on earth. Anybody with me? Every day that I live, I have to live it like it's the last days on earth. Yeah, it's nice to decorate my house so the kids, when they ride around, they can see. It's nice to put a good tree up. Amen. Somebody with me? But what about my heart? Is my heart ready for the King of Kings to enter in? Is my heart ready for Christmas? What about that man, Cindy, that's sleeping, John, over in the tent park on the couch outside that a hundred open, open ears that a hundred people have slept on before? Is my heart ready to do something different this year for him? Amen? Is my heart ready? to let the world know that I'm a lover of Jesus Christ. No matter what folks might do, I'm always going to be a lover of Jesus Christ. Because you see, what I've done, I could not do it on my own. But it's because of the love of Jesus. Are you ready for Christmas? Just a simple question. Are you ready for Christmas? Let's do something extra ordinary this year as we ready ourselves for Christmas. Today, downstairs, they're given vaccines. <laughs> Seven years ago, Pastor Stewart, oh, we wouldn't dare open this church to do vaccines on a Sunday now, would we? Huh? But when God has touched your heart, and you realize you can heal a community? Anybody with me? You realize that these simple deeds, you can heal a community? You do what you have to do. Not for First Church, not for Yvonne Penn, not for any of you as you put your name in. But you do it because we're getting ready for Christmas. And we do it for the goodness of a God that is able to keep us from bumping our toes. God bless you. God bless you. Amen and amen and amen.
we prepare getting ready for Christmas. As we come today and respond to the word that the pastor has given us, I want us now to be in a receptive mood as we respond to the word and as we come in, a, in an atmosphere of prayer and thanksgiving. And as we come today, thinking about all that God has bestowed upon us, we come in an attitude of surrender that God's spirit and our spirit might be able to intermingle that we will not only feel his spirit, but go forth in his spirit. So today as we pray, those who realize and understand the power and the significance of prayer, because we want to be dutiful in, in doing this time in the separate, I'm not going to ask you to come to the altar. I'm going to ask you just pray with me in your seats that we might be able to experience God's power and God's serenity. So as we come today, we want to lift up the Thompson, Anthony, and the Cole family, especially Juliet Cole, who is the fifth year anniversary of her passing, Harrison Henderson Cole, sixth year anniversary, and for all of those who, who come, as we experience the different cultures in our church, we celebrate am anniversaries, but we don't exclude just for those who we're mentioning in this Cole family, but for all of those who are here today who have experienced the loss of loved ones, because there are anniversaries that we lift up. So we ask that as we come, we would pray for not only the Cole family, because I can remember as I thought about it sitting there, Thanksgiving Day marked the 25th, 26th anniversary of my mother's passing. And so we want to lift up all those here today, the Cole family, as we pray for you and the loved ones, realizing that we might always be able to go forth. Pray with me, all of you, as we come forth. Oh, gracious and eternal God, it is the lives of loved ones that we cherish, realizing, oh Lord, the impact and the influence and the touch that they had in the lives of those who stand near, all in the Cole family. The memories that have gone forth and how they talked and did things and said things, and we remember them individually in, in our hearts knowing those words of wisdom, those encouragements, those reprimands when we did something wrong. Remembering those chastisements, the encouragements, and all that they have done for each and every one of you. You know it individually, and you know some of it collectively, but each of you can ponder it in your heart, knowing that as you pass and they pass through your life. All that it meant and all that it will mean. So, oh, gracious God, we give you thanks for the example of those who have gone forth, that their lives might speak as a testimony of your love, your support, and your undergirding. Remembering that you have redeemed them, your saving, your redemption, for the ones who have given us the examples of life. Be with us, O oh God, as we pray for all in this family and other families who experience the anniversaries of their loved ones, as we might continue to lift them up on the Sunday, all saints Sundays and all of the Sundays and days of our lives, that we might experience your peace, your love, and your support. Be with them. Go with them. And give them a light that will shine to give them a light upon their path that they might walk in the ways that would lead them 
closer to you. All of this we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ our Lord. For his name and for his sake. And for all who are gathered. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of God be with each and every one of you. Amen.
in the fullness of time will be a light to the nations. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and engulf those of low degree who fill the hunger and hungry with good things. And the rich you sent away empty. Your own son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from the slavery of sin, and death and made with us a new son. By water and the Spirit, on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take me this is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new cup. Poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ. We offer ourselves in the spirit of the Holy Spirit, in liberty and sacrifice, in union of Christ, offering to us, and we proclaim the victory of faith.
Likewise, we have to stop off and he give us thanks. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is the blood of the new covenant given for you and for me. Not for your sins alone, but for the sins of the whole world. Take it, drink it together. Brother Christ, give it to me. Amen. For this holy sacrament, which has been given to you, that as we take it, that we might go out, realizing that God's Spirit goes with us, that we might be a symbol of the world. We would be thankful to share this blood with us, that we might have the eternal glory of this one. In Jesus' name, amen. Gracious and eternal God, we give you thanks for what our hearts have felt and what our ears have heard, and we thank you, Lord, that you have been with us today. And Lord, as we now go forth, we ask that you would continue to lift us up, that you would lead us, guide us, and direct us today in all of our days, until that day, O oh God, when you would present us all faultless before your throne of grace with great joy. May your love and your wisdom abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. That we might all be able to say together, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Go in peace to serve the Lord and each other. Amen. Trustees, trustees, we're meeting in the conference room. <laughs>